Alright. Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner Classic Class Noon Classics. This episode is number 2289 and double number 2183. I have two DC trades. Now, the first one is from the 1980s by a writer who would basically have very successful on a character I'll we'll talk about next. Well, this is basically. Now, here's the strange thing about the writer who wrote this book. A lot of people think this is the book that he started with, and it's the run that people love from this from, from this writer and the Corsus group. What book is it? Doom Patrol! Yep, I am finally reviewing the Grant Morrison run. Yes. This book collects issues 19 to 34. This actually is a big, bigger book than the original books, per se. Now, the reason why... This is a new printing. Right, yep. Right. Now, for some reason, this is not because it's called Doom Patrol Book 1. You would think, since it collects Volume right. 2, what about the first 18 issues? Not here, because Grant Morrison wrote it. That was Paul Kupperberg. Yes, now I had heard the reason why the Grant Morrison took over the book. The reason was because the book was not selling too well under Paul Kupperberg. The spy tag was actually really good run. So, we have, if you're curious, yeah, this is the run where Cliff sports that jacket he wears. This guy here, I had to look at this guy's name because I don't mention him in the book. This is a character named Red Jack. It only exists for two issues. Yep. We have here, this one here. Uh, that's Dor I think that's Dorothy Spinner, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it's Dorothy. Is it? Well, let's see. Because remember, there's one named Dorothy. Because I remember there was a uh, member like this. Let's see if I can find it here. <clears throat> ah, here she is. Yeah, this character in front, that's Dorothy Spinner. And she is not an original creation of Grant Morrison. She is a Paul Cupberg character that Cupberg that was told to keep on. And she got a lot of development this run. Yes. Now, Crazy Jane herself, she's... Now, the Chief, obviously, is who's in the book, he is not a Crazy Jane Morrison. You're thinking, well, who is? Yeah, and there's also, like, they have they have an actual roster just prior to Grant Morrison taking out the book. So, we basically have the first parents of Rebus. You're thinking, what the heck is Rebus? Rebus is a combination of about three different characters, uh, Larry Trainer, the Negative Man, Eleanor Pole, who was a doctor, and Negus and Rubus. Um, they don't have an orange member joining the team for a little bit. Yeah, now Clifford, uh, the uh, basically Roman himself, and for some reason they have Will Magnus from the Metal Man part of this group, uh, part of this series now, because of pre Vertigo. Oh, before I continue, this book covers from the period of February 1989 to June, July of, excuse me, July of 1980. So, Crime Through Wreckage is, is basically the start of this run. It's like four issues. It is mostly put basically what happened just after the events of Paul Cup or Crime Through Wreckage. Yeah, mostly put some of the characters that I killed off or recently retired. And also, uh, Joshua Clay, he's been in this book, he's, he's originally called Tempest, but for some reason, we got more to go to the book, he had, him stop, he had him stop being a superhero, become the team's doctor. So basically, he's dealing with the effects of that. Now, you're thinking, Doom Patrol, okay, Chief's here, Romance here, Mega Man's here, where's Laster Girl? I believe at this point in time, she was still dead. Yes, she was still dead. Uh, she was not revived until like 2006. So, 
Yeah, so basically we deal with the whole thing with Rebus. We developed this character where it's like multi... It's like two different genders. This this girl here, that's, uh, cra that's Crazy Jane. She becomes a vital character for this run. Now, Road Man, at the start of this, is, is still sporting... Uh, it's not a look toward the end of the first arc. He's not sporting a different look. But this is the look he had when I, uh, uh, basically Arnold Drake had the book back in the 60s. Yeah, same look. And we have first new villains, the Scissor Men. Yes, who hunt the Doom Patrol. And the Chief, for some reason, has got white hair now. Yes, and he's still in a wheelchair. Uh, the Chief, if you're curious about him, he's supposed to be DC's version of Professor Xavier. As a case in point, the Doom Patrol is DC's equivalent to the X-Men, despite making a debut a month prior. And there was also a rumor, I heard a rumor that Arnold Drake was paranoid that Marvel had spies DC because any kind of idea you have for Doom Patrol, uh, Stanley basically, according to him, stole ideas for the X-Men. So that did with Scissor Man, of course, well, stuff like that. And then basically at the conclusion of the story arc, well, not long after this, we have the debut of a new villain group, the Brotherhood of Dada. Yep. Yeah. At first, basically, I joined the Super Patrol again. And then we have basically 23 debut. This guy here. This is Red Jack. He is only in this two-parter. Yes. And here's Dorothy Spinner. Yes, Dorothy Spinner, who's a member of the New Patrol. She is a very weird girl. A person I like to criticize her. And look, this is the issue we have. Issue 23's debut of the famous Jack and Pants. Yeah, because Cliff basically, he was a racing car, he wore clothes, but now since he's basically a robot, he doesn't wear clothes. Yeah, so... This mostly put just deals with Red Jack for two issues. Yeah, that's most of what it is. Just a, just a quick two-parter. And then with issue 25, we have debut of a character known as Miss Nova. Now, here's the thing. So, Doom Patrol has a new headquarters inside of Mount Justice. Yeah, so, they said headquarters here. One of, like, two different teams who set up space operations. The spy fact is a JSA play. It's a it's it's owned by the Justice League, but we have Doom Patrol basically occupied. At one point, uh, let's see, the other teams occupied besides well, Justice League, New Patrol, uh, the JSA briefly occupied at one point. Uh, in the late nineties, it was occupied by of all people, the Red Young Justice. Yep, it was their base, and the Young Justice TV show. And the comics were a secret sanctuary. So, yeah. So, if you're curious about. The Brotherhood of Dada. Yeah. It's Grant Morrison, his weird characters. There is Mr. Nobody. Yep. Makes his debut here in issue 26. And we have the storyline here. He has his Brotherhood of Dada. And they're only here. Like, here's the debut at the end of issue 26. That's the debut. And they're here to issue 29. And then they disappear until, like, issue 50. Yeah. So then, basically, toward the end of the story arc, like, basically, in 20, for some reason, we have a guest appearance here by Booster Gold, Animal Man, and Blue Beetle. Yes. Who, at this point in time, of all these three characters, I think Animal Man had an ongoing series at this point. Uh, Grant Morris was running at that same point, point in time. But uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle... Their books actually ended about a couple years prior to this run starting, so. I'm sure the reason why that Grant Morrison's doing it here, because my guess is that Keith Giffen and Jane Matias must have asked as a favor for why not be here for guest appearance. <coughs> so basically, it gets wrapped up by 29. Would you have guest appearance in here by Suitman and the Wally West Flash? How do those Wally West Flash? Because it's the late 80s, so it's got to be Wally West. So, they wrap up this Brotherhood of Dada storyline. 
We also have guest parents, but pretty much members of the JLI in this issue, because why not? And immediately afterwards, we deal with, well, just stuff with Larry trying to get a new body for the next couple issues. Yeah, the last few issues here are very weird. Per se, it's like, yeah, Roman is, like, you say goodbye to his golden attire, and then he gets a brand new, uh, out, and we see an appearance here by a brain. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah, then we, then we have basically debut of a new look for robot man yes this black suit that exists for a certain period of time yep and then we have no it's not John see somebody else yes and then in the very next issue issue 32 we have return of a couple old, I think I think it's actually not 32 it's actually 33 we have a return of a couple old bad guys or at least an old friends of the patrol so more odd stuff in here. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was 33. Nope. It might be 34. Roman gets taken away. I think in this issue particularly we have Return of Them. I think so. Because I know I saw them in here. Actually it was issue uh, 34. Yes, in 34 we get the Return of Mr. Mala. And who's the baby carriage? Why, it's the brain, of course. Yep. Yes. My guess is Grant Morris beat him here because it was probably a request from a puck up work. Hey, can you feature brain and Mr. Molly run? Sure. Let's probably get one issue. Yeah. I think, okay, we've got some new patrol in here. I'm not sure this weird gross stuff related to brain, uh, stuff related to Clifford. So, uh, Clifford Steele. And of course, the Mr. Molly's thing where she's chewing gum. Eventually, of course, where Brain takes over the body in this issue of Robot Roman's body. And then something very strange happens. This actually has been kept canon after all these years. This next part is still canon. So the Brain takes over the body of Robot Man. He's like. He's like, you look very handsome, Master. Yes, well, we must destroy our man's brain. And take advantage on Mala. Yes. Let's stop pretending. All these years, we we worked together and lived together. I can't with, I can't live with you. I can't like you any longer. And then he proclaims, the brain proclaims, he's a little Mr. Mala. And Mr. Mala says, you know how long we to hear those words. Don't wish his feelings. And then brain tells Mr. Mala, kiss me, Mala. But first, give the gum. Okay. And they kiss, and boom, blow up. Not seen again for over a decade. No, seriously. Yeah. And then, of course, basically, they're gone. Yeah. Weird start of this run. this book a 9 out of 10. If you're curious, though, when the heck does the Brain Mission Mala return? Because, like, oh, let's just feature the Brain Mission Mala here for an issue. And then they die. Yeah, this I thought was quite weird of an idea. Like, okay, let's have the brain mission model apparently die. Yeah, and then they returned. I think it was prior to the Salvation Run. I think so because it was just weird. It's like, oh, we have Mission Mala here, a Doom Patrol villain. Okay, so yeah. And here's the strange thing, though, that was back in 1990. They went up a scene again for 16 years <clears throat> until they popped up in Teen Titans when Jeff Johns wrote the book. You're thinking, really? Yeah, it took 16 freaking years for these two return. <clears throat> and they were around since then. Though they apparently died during Salvation Run. But they're brought back in, like, let's see. 
when was the first time that they had Mission Mel and the Brain Shove? I think it was in Teen Titans. Oh, well, it says here, Animal Man. Yes. Animal Man. Definitely a brought him in issue. Animal Man. Like, that's a strange place to bring him in. Yes. Him and the Brain. Yeah, for some reason they have they have made their first post flesh appearance in Animal Man. Yes, Animal Man. Why? Just cause it's one of the most baffling things. Yeah, but like I said, nine out of ten. Yeah. Now, do I think this one's overrated? No, it's a lot of fun. But wow, you kill up Mission Mala and the Brain, two guys who are a long time in the New Patrol. And they die. Yeah, and the whole thing of them being lovers. That's even so canon this very day. Alright, next up we have is... Batman. Prince Charming. Yes. It's a uh, two-issue mini uh, Dark Prince Charming by Marion TV. Yes, this is an ultimate universe. So basically, Batman with... Cat He's in the universe of Catwoman, Penguin... It's basically Batman who finds out the fact he has a daughter from the former lover of his. And it's not really proven if, in fact, that basically the daughter is actually his. There's also here with the Joker and Harley is basically his girlfriend in this book. He kills his subordinates, but he keeps one, Arch one line named Archie. <laughs> Excuse me. The artwork of this book is freaking gorgeous. Like, wow, this artwork is good. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much this book per se, but I will point out that by the end of the book, Bruce Wayne does legally adopt the girl. There's no mention of Robins in this book, surprisingly, but this book is still pretty good. This book, a 10 out of 10. It's really good. Okay, so that's the book, the book review. Next up is one more comic corner, and it's on Doctor Who. Okay, next view. Bye.